Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rick. And today we're here to talk about how Rick got started with homebrewing. Um, we spent a lot of time recently talking about fiber arts and I wanted to find out more about how Rick got started with his hobby. Um, you would think that after 15 years I would know all these details, but I really don't. Um, something to do with California, but beyond that I'm lost, so <laughs> we'll have to get started. Um, well, I had a roommate who was interested, a friend of mine who was an engineer. We were living in uh, Redondo Beach, California in the late 80s, early, actually early 90s. And at the time, what was interesting is that home brewing was really only legal about 10, 11, 12 years ago at the time when uh, uh, President Carter uh, made it legal. I think it was 1979. Sorry, I don't have my research there. Look it up. And my buddy and I decided we wanted to brew our own beer. And I don't really remember a lot of the details. I do remember that we got a lot of equipment. I don't remember where we got our ingredients. There certainly wasn't a homebrew uh, supply store. And there wasn't an internet, or at least whatever internet there was, none of us were aware of. And my friend and I just decided we wanted to brew some beer. Um, I can remember the name of the first beer we would. It was a Screaming Naked with a Dog on Your Head Ale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure we were drinking when we came up with the name. So Dave and I uh, started brewing together in our kitchen in Redondo Beach, California. And I don't recall it being all that great of an experience, or at least not great results, um, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing. I believe we had one book that we were able to find at a local library and we just did hey, what libraries. we could. Yeah. Yes, go libraries. Yeah. Um, so Dave and I kept working on um, just different beers, but not really spending a lot more time. It was more about volume at that time. Mm. And then I just uh, decided, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I just was going to ask volume. So, you know, homebrewing, one of the advantages is that you can brew a lot more for a lot less money. So that was one of the things that attracted you guys probably. Yeah, Living exactly. On and... Living on a budget in the uh, first Bush presidency recession, uh, we mm. were trying to get the most beer for our buck and uh, decided that home brewing was a method to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. So go ahead. So where did you go from there? Did you guys um, well, experiment it... much or... I, again, I don't recall. I don't remember. We did when we could. We both had other jobs, other projects, um, and you know, spent a lot of time at the beach and other things. But <laughs> I, I at least remember about four or five batches. They got progressively better. They were mostly kits. They were extracts. They there wasn't anything right home about. You know, we do a brown, a pale, a porter. Mm -hmm. We didn't get all that creative that I recall in that. That's surprising, knowing my friend Dave, uh, who's you know quite the experimenter when it comes to uh, to projects. But um, ended up that I Dave and I stopped living together. He moved in with his girlfriend. I got my own place. It was smaller. I then decided to move back to uh, Washington D.C., where I eventually got to meet this fine young lady. <laughs> and I moved everything that I owned in the back of my tiny pickup truck and mm -hmm. there wasn't room for a carboy there wasn't room it for a bucket didn't there... include your beer kit yeah exactly yeah. so because you weren't brewing we met in a bar um and bonded over our love of beer um but you weren't brewing at that point no yeah. I wasn't I wasn't yeah um I'm not exactly sure why probably just because I just didn't want to reinvest at the time and all this I mean mm -hmm. it was back in my mind that I was always interested Right. And it wasn't until we moved up here. I can remember we were living in Montpelier, mm -hmm. and um, you just said, "Yeah, let's uh, you know if you want to brew again." We were living in a small apartment. I wasn't anticipating that, but we were looking for a new home. Right. And I anticipated that we were going to have room to do these other projects, hobbies, etc. Right. And decided that beer was going to be that hobby I wanted to continue to uh, keep up with. Mm -hmm. So I started making meticulous notes and must have this and what about that? And I kept you know, pricing things out. Mm -hmm. And after a while, Sarah just said, just buy the stuff. Just get yeah. the basics and worry about the, the rest later. Well, I have to tell my story on myself. So I wanted to be a supportive wife, of course, but because um, that, that was what, year three of marriage or something. We're still sort of settling into the thing, I feel like. Um, but... Uh, we had had some not very good homebrew by a friend of ours um, previously, and 
And so Rick came to me and goes, yeah, I think, I think homebrewing, that's what my next hobby I want to start up. And I'm going, uh, it's anything like that horrible stuff we had at so-and-so's house. I don't know. So yeah. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. She was very supportive. She told me to get the, the things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were then in our current house, uh, recently the local cooperative market had opened a little bit of a homebrew section and we just, just you know, started doing something again. And Sarah's right. So I made my first beer. I can remember when we were opening that beer and I said, Hey, we're ready to taste our first beer. And it's a porter of some sort. Mm-hmm. And, um, I didn't know this backstory at the time. And she, we opened the beer, we poured the beer, she tried the beer and she said, good. You can continue doing this. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be approved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, that was you know, it. Was it wasn't it was a kit or a partial mash at the time, which is using a bit of extract and a, a little bit of specialty grains mm-hmm. uh, to come up with something that's not quite extract, not quite all grain, and uh, you know, just slowly started adding equipment as I added knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you met Scott around this time too. Right. Scott Russell, whom we've met, mentioned in a couple of other of the videos, at least, uh, especially the one where we were tasting the spiced porter, um, had written or was writing for Brew Your Own magazine for a number of years. And he had been brewing since about the same time I had started, but he had continued brewing. So he has roughly 30 years experience, at the, uh, 20 years at the time, 30 years now. And having that wealth of knowledge there to kind of pick their brain, his brain was helpful. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of home brewers, and at least if they're starting now, there's probably almost too much information that comes on the internet. Then some of it conflicts. Mm -hmm. And I ask one question and get 10 opinions on how to do something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then if you're working, if you have ever been in new England, you know that you can ask, there's a difference between saying, can I do this and should I do this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you might say to a New Englander, hey, can I do this? And they'll say, yep. But if you would ask the question, should I do this? They'd say, nope. <laughs> and it was kind of the same thing uh, you know, in the brewing community. You would ask about any type of thing, whether it's developing a recipe, how to test this, how to clean that. And there was just a lot of information there. Which kind of segues well into why we wanted to start the Home Brewers Club. Mm-hmm. Just because I thought it was better to get your local perspective, your local brewers, and ask them questions and get their answers and see their setups and go visit them when they're brewing and find out what they did that I could mimic and what things that maybe I wanted to do differently. Right. Yep. And also learn from each other and experiment and have that camaraderie, kind of like we do with the, the fiber group is, you know, oh, okay, I want to make this recipe, but it seems a little complicated, or it's it's telling me to do this stuff I've never heard of, or, you know, something else, and you can get, you know, someone to help you, or give another opinion, or... Well, I imagine it's very similar, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I imagine it's similar also to learning a pattern. Right. There's a special language, at least from my outsider's Mm -hmm. point of view, to reading a fiber or knitting pattern, and the same thing might be with a a beer recipe. If you're not familiar with the terminology, it can be a little bit off-putting, yeah. and it'll keep you from kind of especially moving if forward. it's like uh, a little bit of like the historical beer that you brewed or something else is is a little unusual. Mm-hmm. It's like really, I'm I'm gonna put this ingredient. Okay, and why am I doing that? Yeah, yeah. So having a homebrew club and and the homebrew guru Scott Russell's uh, uh, moniker for himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, which if you're interested in taking a class with Scott, he's going to be on our next uh, brew tour. Um, coming up in August of 2018, so look for that. Yeah, so yeah, if you're interested in learning how to brew and you want to participate in one of our tours, Scott and I and some others will be there to teach you so you don't have to be overwhelmed by what's on the internet. Right. Yeah. So we'll link up to some um, books that might be good for beginning. Yeah, sure. And um, some other resources that Rick's found. Um, But thank you, honey. That was enlightening. And and, and yeah, we're continuing to brew um, Rick's you know, the the main brewer, I'm mostly the taster, taster and the bottler um, around here, but it's been really fun. Well, before we say goodbye, I do want to segue back to what you were saying about the fiber and the and having a group. That is, I knitting, it seems like you enjoy yourself. It is mm-hmm. a very good solo project, mm-hmm. but it does seem that it's fun to also share. And as much as I enjoy brewing on my own and to what extent I can, because sometimes you do need a hand if things are, are, are heavy. 
Um, but it's much more fun to brew with other people mm -hmm. and share your beers the same way you might share your knitting. Your, right. Your I think that's the thing about any any hobby or passion that people have is that you want people who appreciate what you do, right? Mm -hmm. So I like knitting things for Rick because he really appreciates and wears the stuff that I make him and doesn't just go, oh, that looks nice and stick it in a drawer. Same thing. Rick might come up with a pretty unusual recipe, but you know, I'm a pretty broad palate and I'm willing to try things. And so you'll come up with recipes and that have all kinds of, you know, interesting ingredients in them. And, and, you know, I, I appreciate them and I enjoy taste testing with you. Um, but and, you, we have learned you, know, you have that. to, I'll say, try this beer. And she go, what's in it? I'll go, try this beer. Yeah, try this beer. <laughs> Cause they don't want to influence <laughs> no, somebody's. No, you don't. <laughs> but that's the thing. Um, yeah. I think having an audience for your, for your stuff. And again, that, that kind of sounding board, you know, working in a vacuum sometimes can get a little lonely. So mm -hmm having um, somebody else to bounce ideas off of or to be inspired by or whatever it is um, is really helpful. So yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, another parallel there is that knitting groups are often in, in yarn shops, right? Because the yarn shop wants you there to, to buy their products and, to, and that, but the, the other side of that is they'll help you with your pattern. They'll help you if you get stuck on a project because they want you to be successful. I think a homebrew shop is the same way. They want you to come in and buy their ingredients and support your local homebrew shop, but they're also there to provide guidance, to look at recipes, to hook you up with people who like to brew similar kinds of beer as you or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's a great partnership. Right. If you happen to be local, we have a homebrew club called Hops, which is the Homebrew Outreach and Preservation Society. We referenced them before, and we meet at a the Lebanon brew shop and it's kind of a very symbiotic relationship the brew shop is there so that we can come and buy their things but they need us as much as we need them there are a lot of places on the internet you can buy ingredients mm -hmm. you can buy equipment but you really should support local as much as you can um there are a couple i won't name names but there's a larger um, brew supply that was bought out by inbev or one of the other big mega brewing companies. And, you know, that just ends up giving more money to the big corporations. So support your local brew shop if you can. They really appreciate it, and I think mm -hmm. you'll get a better experience. And you get that customization, too. You can't call up, you know, the people at xyzbrewing.com and have them guide you through a recipe. But if you go down to your local brew shop, they'll be happy to help you. So More than happy. Yeah. That is one thing that beer geeks like to talk about is beer. Yeah, exactly. Good. Well, we don't have any um, beer to taste. I was going to cheers you. Um, <laughs> but we will uh, We will be tasting our Party Guile beers probably, what, in a couple of weeks? Yeah, um, right. Coming we... up. So, so look for that. Look for that uh, next episode. We'll let you know when that's coming up. And yeah, exactly. We yeah. did bottle one of the one of the beers, and the other is going to be put in the keg. So hopefully, yes, in the next week or so, we should have something to sample and hopefully enjoy drinking. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, everyone, for being with us. Thanks, honey, for that uh, historical review <laughs> of your brewing process. We'll keep brewing and tasting and uh, bringing you more interesting beer tidbits. So thanks for being with us.